All right, everyone, welcome today to our Meal Solution Monday class, kicking off the week with a great class for the summer with a fun recipe we are going to be making today um, a eggplant farm salad, okay? So I feel like eggplant farm can be a little all over the place in terms of seasonality because we might think of like chicken parm and being a little bit of a heavier dish, but eggplant is certainly a summer veggie. If you have some in your garden, they're probably going to be ready to go later in the summer. And this could be a fun way to utilize them that's not your typical eggplant farm on the skillet or in the oven, a little bit more of a refreshing take to it, which we've all been chatting about how hot it is outside. So this can be a way to do a little less time in your oven, a little bit less of a heavier dish and lighten it up here with this salad, okay? Now, I wanna chat about eggplant itself. We're gonna kind of merge this almost into like a produce spotlight class here talking about eggplant. But I wanna go ahead and get our eggplant prepped and cooking before I start rambling on to you guys um, about eggplant. So. Let me stop sharing this screen here, and I'm going to stop this video, and we're going to focus on my ingredients over here. If I can get some thumbs up that you see my ingredients over here, that would be great. Perfect. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, I do have, I'll pan over here to my stove here in a minute. I have a pan over here that I have sprayed with oil and I'm just going to go ahead and put it on medium just to start warming it up while we prep our eggplant. Now this recipe is actually supposed to be done on the grill but it's way too hot to be even out on the grill right now um, and also if you don't have a grill or don't like to grill we'd like to be able to show you that you can definitely adapt these recipes to doing them inside which I've made a couple adaptations to this recipe that I'll chat about as we go. I've already rinsed off my eggplant and I'm just going to take off the end here. And what we're going to do is do some um, thin slices of it. You could do thicker if you like, but I'm gonna go about like that. And the recipe you will see when I send it out calls for two eggplants. Now that is to feed a family of four, four individual entree salads, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm the only one here who's probably going to eat this salad today. So I am not going to do a two whole eggplants. I'm probably not even gonna cut up this whole eggplant. I'm probably just gonna do a couple more slices that'll fit into my pan here and call it a day with that, just because I don't wanna waste, all right? So I have some eggplants sliced up here nice and thin. And then I am going to marinate it just for a second in some Italian dressing, okay? So we need a fourth of a cup of dressing. Sorry, I know you guys can't see behind the scenes, but right here behind where you see is my tripod. So I'm like hugging my tripod over here, um, trying to mix this together for you, but I'm trying to do that so that way my arms aren't blocking you everywhere as I'm doing this, okay? But we need a quarter of a cup in here, okay? Just like that. And then, like I said, we're just going to lightly dip them each side. So I call it a quick marinade, but it's really just a dip, okay? And then we're going to transfer them over here um, to our pan that, like I said, I have warming up here on medium. I might do just a bit higher. And I will show you my pan here in a second. But going back to this Italian dressing, if you notice, um, I am using the robust Italian in our brand. And um, a big reason that I decided to do that, I know that I um, have some folks on class who are really watching their sodium. So I feel like every little bit counts. The robust Italian, at least in our line, is actually a little bit lower in sodium compared to your regular Italian and even the light Italian, okay? And um, my reason to believe that that is, is that a robust Italian dressing in general has a, 
it's more robust flavor, okay? It's known to have some more oregano and garlic in it compared to your regular Italian. And because of that, I think that there's probably less salt in it, okay? So let me rinse my hands off quick and then I'll move my camera over. But I think that that's good to keep in mind about dressing, especially here during pasta salad season. So if you're looking to have um, a little bit more, let me move this over. Um, if you're looking to have a little bit more of a robust flavor in the way of a pasta salad, then maybe you want to go with that Italian dressing rather than the regular. And then, like I said, it's just a hair lower in sodium. The sodium content in this, I'll show it to you again, in this robust Italian is 300, okay, which I know that is still not considered low sodium by any means, but I think the regular Italians were like 340 or so. So any little bit can help. Um, as you can see, I just covered my dish here. We want to cook this eggplant on each side for about three to four minutes, okay? So, um, oh, I see that somebody shared a recipe. Was it this recipe or another recipe? I was too busy looking over this direction and didn't see um, my, uh, my chat. I'll have to look at that then. <laughs> um, so, all right, let me go back to, oh, there you go. Oh, the, the eggplant farm boat, very nice. Okay, perfect. So, let me go back to sharing my screen for you guys. And let's chat a little bit about eggplant itself. So can you guys see my screen again? If I could get some thumbs up, that would be great. Yes, perfect. Okay, so while my eggplant is cooking here three to four minutes on each side, let's chat about eggplant itself. Some of you have already mentioned this in chat, but eggplant um, it can come in a lot of different varieties from what we were using today being the purple, that nice deep purple, but there are also other varieties that are white, red, green, or even black. Okay, so even a deeper purple than what we were using today. And the name eggplant actually came from that white variety. So um, the plants looked like eggs because they were white eggplants kind of hanging in a tree, or not a tree, in a plant. And they looked like eggs, so they called them eggplants, uh, which is something I did not know until I created this presentation and I thought was pretty cool. Um, so, yes, that is where the name eggplant comes from. Um, in the United States, New Jersey actually produces the most amount of eggplant. And then my last little note here, eggplant is one of those things that's kind of like a... Um, tomato. So I have on here, I see somebody just asked the question. I have on here, scientifically, eggplant is a fruit, but nutritionally, it's a vegetable. And what I mean by that, and I say the same thing about tomatoes, is that from a scientific standpoint, um, eggplants are flowering. And so they have seeds and they are then therefore considered a fruit. But from a nutrition standpoint, we do not consider eggplant a carbohydrate. So although it is a fruit, it doesn't contain those higher natural sugars similar to strawberries, bananas, watermelons, whatever it might be. So that's why I like to kind of put it in that mind frame as yes, from a science perspective, it is a fruit. But when we're talking about nutrition, we are not considering eggplant a fruit that is a carbohydrate, okay? Um, that's so interesting to see a lot of you mentioning about New Jersey, eating a lot of eggplant there and eggplant farm. I really um, I really had no idea the vast amount of farmland and agriculture that's really heavy in New Jersey. I think about the beach when I think about New Jersey, which is a, a good thing, a positive thing. I love the beaches there, um, but it's really awesome to hear about the ag side of that state as well. All right, so moving on, why do we want to incorporate eggplant in our, oh, I see somebody said New Jersey is the garden state. True story, it totally makes sense. It does, it does. Um, but why do we want to incorporate eggplant into our day? These are the most notable nutrients, okay, about them that we really want to um, emphasize there. 
Uh, first up is the fiber, and that is why we did not peel the skin off of our eggplant places that I have in here, which I'm going to go ahead and turn them. So give me a moment. Um, but yes, we kept the skin on our slices. Oh, let me use my spatula instead. I thought I was going to be fancy and use these little tongs, but no. All right, let me get a spatula. They're more like a pancake. Um, so the skin is on here. That skin is going to be chock full of fiber. So we want to leave that intact. That fiber, once again, like we always chat about, um, it's going to be helpful for our heart health as well as keeping us full and potentially helping to stabilize our blood sugar a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that back up. But there we go. We have the fiber component. We need to leave that skin on to have it. If you have a recipe, though, that calls to remove the skin, um, a vegetable peeler, I have used it before, is a great way to take the skin off of an eggplant if for some reason you have um, a recipe that calls for that to go. Um, next one on there, potassium, a good bit of potassium in there. We think about potatoes and bananas when it comes to potassium. Eggplants also have a good bit of potassium as well, which can be great for our blood pressure. It kind of counteracts um, some sodium and whatnot in there. So potassium, a great one. Folate as well, um, especially for those that are in childbearing um, ages and whatnot. But we do need folate throughout the whole life cycle. So a good one to get with your eggplant. And then lastly, the reason that your eggplant is purple, one of my favorite phytonutrients, anthocyanins, um, also an antioxidant, has those properties. That is what makes purple foods purple. Um, and those antioxidant qualities in anthocyanins can be really, really great for our heart in particular. So the more purple foods that we can incorporate, the better, okay? So our tomatoes, I'm uh, not tomatoes, our um, eggplants are almost done here. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen and we'll focus more back on our um, ingredients over here. So I'm gonna let our slices cook for just another minute longer. And I have a Roma tomato here. That's why I said tomatoes a minute ago. Um, they were involved, <laughs> not random. So we have a Roma tomato here. You'll see once again, the recipe calls for two of them, but I just picked up one um, because I knew I wasn't gonna be making so many slices. If you have some of these growing in the garden, that's great. If you have other varieties of tomatoes, that's fine too, whatever you would like to do. Um, and I'm just gonna slice these up to then put on top of our eggplant. See if I have enough tomato to go on the amount of slices of eggplant that I have here. Once again, don't mind me as I'm like hugging my tripod, cutting this tomato, I apologize. For those of you who follow me and my nails, I got my nails done over the weekend. They're pretty pink. Um, so let's take, let's take us back over here to our pan. Okay. So over here, I'm going to take that cover off. And I'm going to go ahead, just flip these over one more time back to their original size. Looking good. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and top them with our tomato slices. Oh, that was hot. Accidentally touched the side there. So this is how it's getting that um, parm vibe, okay? We're not using actual tomato sauce. We are using sliced tomatoes instead these ones here and we'll put that one here and we'll put this one put this one here okay just like that um all right so we have our tomatoes on there 
And then to top it off, to kind of seal the deal of it being like a parm, we're going to just put some cheese on top. The recipe calls for mozzarella cheese. I like our Italian blend of cheeses that has the mozzarella, the provolone, all of that jazz. So go ahead and top on our tomatoes there. Oh, I see some people say eggplant and tomato. That's a no. Is it the flavor of that that you don't like together? I missed that part in chat. I'll keep trying to look over. Okay, we'll get that on there. Oh, they are considered nightshade. Yes, they are. Eggplant is in the nightshade variety. Okay, there we go. We got that on there. I'm going to cover this back up just for a minute. We're going to let that, um, that cook up a bit. And then let me kind of clean up my station over here a bit. And then move you guys back over. So now we will work on plating this, okay? You could toss your salad in a big bowl and do it that way, or just make individual plates. However you wanna go about it, I'm gonna go the individual plate route here today. If you do do it in a bowl as the recipe calls for, it then tells you to toss your lettuce with some more Italian dressing. I think this way you just kind of let people dress their salad up how um, they want to. All right. So we'll get a little bit more on there. Good. And then our tomatoes are almost done. I'm going to grab um, one more thing here out of the fridge. There we go. All right, guys, I have some Parmesan cheese that we can then do a little bit of a peeling of that on top of your chew. Let me go ahead and get that open. Sorry, guys, struggling. Just a moment. Okay. So I'm going to put that to the side for a minute. I think that our eggplant should be good. It looks good. It smells like eggplant farm. It really does. Okay. A little bit. We're going to just pop it on our salad here. However many or little that you want. Whoop, eggplant down. Turn around. One, two, three, flip. Perfect. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to leave it at three there. Okay. And a little closer. Now, here, like I said, if you want to just make it really parmy. Gonna, I've never done this before, but... Where is my vegetable peeler? What the recipe says to do is to take a vegetable peeler and to peel some parm. Oh, look at that pretty little peel. And put that on our salad. Okay. So what do I think I'm going to do that? We'll do a couple. We'll see here if I can. There we go. Ooh, that's a good one. There we go. Perfect. Do some more here. This side's a little easier, it looks like, to get. Okay, so just having that on there, checked in. I might kind of try to, there we go. All right, do one more over here. Perfect. Okay, put this to the side. I'm going to dress it up here with a little pepper. Just for some added flair here. 
okay, some pepper on there. And then I'm gonna take that robust Italian and just do a little drizzle. Oh, also guys, the recipe, whoops, that came out a little bit. The recipe calls for arugula. I am not an arugula fan. I am a romaine fan. So that is what I made it with. But there we have it, our eggplant parm salad. Okay, so once again, just a fun, different way to um, utilize eggplant, eggplant parm. Let me um, come back here. Eggplant parm is something that I go, grew up eating a lot with my gram, and I think she would have loved this recipe. So just a different take on stuff like that, I think is always fun to bring into the kitchen. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. It was good to have you all along. Um, please stay cool in this weather. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our recording. Um, we, of 